Joining us right now to talk investing in China is Patrick Chovanek. He is economic advisor and former chief strategist at Silvercrest Asset Management, which has $31 billion in assets under management. Patrick, all of this stuff that they've been talking about the last couple of weeks, does that boost your confidence in investing in China? Well, the things that you just described, they don't sound like really market-oriented measures, right? especially telling people not to sell. Uh, China has demonstrated in the past that it can put a floor under share prices if it wants to. And if that's what you're betting on, then fine. But if what you want to see is the doom and gloom aura that has, is over Chinese markets somehow go away, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon because the problems are deep and they're not going away. And, I, I mean, th these moves are really kind of phenomenal to, to think of a government telling people to do all of these things after, by the way, that same government was responsible for talking down a lot of, of, of these companies and these stocks before because of the moves that they were making in the past. And, and they've done it before. Um, they've put a floor under the market, but they haven't addressed the underlying issues. And Which one of them yeah. is uh, U.S.-China tensions. Uh, a lot of investors, both outside of China and inside of China, are worried about Chinese companies, as well as other companies doing business in China, being in the crosshairs of tit-for-tat sanctions. Uh, and I don't see those tensions going away. The other thing is it's not just people outside of China worried about external issues, but there is a real sense of gloom over the Chinese market domestically. People don't feel like the country is going in the right direction under Xi. That doesn't translate into open opposition or criticism, but it does translate into a kind of despondency about the future of the country and the kind of moves that would really change things. That money goes away pretty quick. I mean, it's like dumping a, buck, a bucket in the ocean. You, you know, you keep trying and trying, but it's not. Are you sure it's totally different than QE or, or when the Fed just <laughs> buys bonds, hands over? And, and remember, people said that it wasn't completely out of the realm of possibility that maybe the Fed would buy S&Ps. It never happened, I don't think. But it, it's, is it that different than buying? It's not totally different, but it's of a whole different order when you have the government telling Telling injury. and buying right. stocks. Okay. So, so the kind of heavy-handed intervention is quite different, which some people say is good if they, want, if they want to see share prices stop falling. But in the end, it really reinforces the problem, which is that people feel that the business climate in China is very heavy-handed and state-controlled. And if you're worried more about them rounding up on, you know, the next time they're going to round up entrepreneurs um, and, yeah. and get them in trouble, it's, it's not moving towards that more market-oriented outcome that is really the cure to what ails China. Can I just ask, Joe, Joe Ma, I mean, Joe Tsai and Jack Ma both bought shares of Alibaba yesterday we were reporting on it. That, yep. that they're doubling down on this. So if, if they seem to have more confidence, should we read anything into that? I wouldn't say yes. <laughs> uh, there are good companies in China. Uh, the problem is, what is the catalyst for people taking a completely new look at them? And that's not just foreign investors. That's Chinese investors. There was an article in the Wall Street Journal the other day about Chinese investors pulling out of China and putting their money into the Japanese market. Yeah. because they're so despondent about the outlook. Uh, I actually, as an investor, I'm more interested in who's the beneficiary of this. And the beneficiary really has been Mexico. Mexico with the French shoring. Right. And one of the reasons why the Mexicans wanted to make a deal quickly with Trump over NAFTA was that they knew that if they did, the ire would shift to China and that they would be the primary beneficiaries of that. And I was in Mexico last summer and for all its other problems, trade with the United States is booming because companies are located in Mexico mm -hmm. uh, as an alternative to being in China because of all no, those things. It's tactics. like onshoring, close shoring. Close shoring, friend shoring. Friend shoring. Yeah.